When is hurricane season? What are hurricanes? I live on the Eastern Shore. Should I be prepared for hurricanes? My name is Delencia Jenkins, and I'm a geography and communication student at Salisbury University, and I'll be answering all these questions and more coming up. Hurricanes are essentially large circulating clusters of thunderstorms that form over warm water. Hurricanes have three main components to them. The first one is the eye. The eye of a hurricane is considered to be the center of the storm. When hurricane hunters fly into the eye of a hurricane to gather weather data for forecasters, they will usually find calm and clear skies within the eye of the storm. The second main component to a hurricane is the eye wall. The eye wall is the complete opposite of the eye of the hurricane. This is where you'll find the heaviest rain, the strongest winds, and the most destruction occurring. And the third main component to a hurricane are the rain bands. Rain bands are bands of rain that stretches away from the center of the storm. This is where you'll find heavy rain, strong winds, and even some rotation that can cause tornadoes well away from the center of the storm. Once a storm exceeds tropical storm strength, it is then called a hurricane and is placed into one of five categories on the Safford-Simpson wind scale. The Safford-Simpson wind scale takes the sustained winds of a hurricane and places it into that respective category. A Category 1 hurricane has sustained winds between 75 miles per hour and 95 miles per hour. These winds can cause siding and roof damage to homes. In late July of 2020, Hurricane Hannah was a Category 1 hurricane that devastated southern Texas with its sustained winds of 90 miles per hour and wind gusts exceeding 100 miles per hour. Like most hurricanes, power outages and flooding was a big problem for residents and businesses. The damage cost is estimated to be around $399 million. There were also tornadoes reported as a result of Hannah. One EF0 tornado hit Brownsville, Texas, contributing to more structural damage. The next category on the Safford Simpson wind scale is Category 2. Hurricanes that are placed into Category 2 status must have a maximum sustained wind speed ranging between 96 miles per hour and 110 miles per hour. What should you expect should you ever find yourself experiencing a Category 2 hurricane firsthand? Well, on top of major flooding caused by storm surge and heavy rain, it is not uncommon to now expect major roof damage even on well-built homes. Uprooted trees and the possibility of total power loss for up to weeks after the storm has passed is not out of the cards either. One example of a Category 2 hurricane would be Hurricane Sally of the year 2020. Hurricane Sally made landfall in southern Alabama on September 16, 2020. Sally had maximum sustained wind speeds of 105 miles per hour, making it a Category 2 hurricane. The total damage cost was hard to find, but from looking at various sources, they all seem to favor totals well over $5 billion. What made Sally unique was her rapid intensification over a two-hour period. Another important factor in Sally's history was how slow the storm traveled. This is not good for us on land because slow-moving storms, such as Sally, will cause higher than normal rainfall amounts from a hurricane. The Florida Panhandle saw around 10 inches of rain, and around four inches of rain were recorded even in parts of southeastern Virginia. The third category on the Safford Simpson wind scale is, you guessed it, category three. This is when we would consider a hurricane to be major. 
Hurricanes classified as a Category 3 has maximum sustained wind speeds between 111 and 129 miles per hour. Mobile homes in the hurricane's path can be destroyed, and homes that are even well built can suffer major damage. Hurricane Wilma in the year of 2005 made landfall in the United States near Cape Romano, Florida. Wilma dumped a maximum of 10 inches of rain in central and southern Florida. The wind gusts were clocked between 100 and 120 miles per hour. Hurricane Wilma of the year 2005 is just one example of a Category 3 hurricane. A Category 4 hurricane on the Safford Simpson wind scale is also considered a major hurricane. The National Hurricane Center says, quote, catastrophic damage will occur, end quote. The maximum sustained winds in this category are between 130 and 156 miles per hour. Here you can expect well-built homes to suffer severe damage like total roof loss and compromised exterior walls. Most trees will be uprooted and local areas could be uninhabitable for weeks or months after the storm due to structural damage and loss of electricity and water. Hurricane Laura is a good example of a Category 4 hurricane. Hurricane Laura made landfall in Cameron, Louisiana in late August of 2020. With sustained wind speeds of 150 miles per hour, Laura was a strong Category 4 hurricane and the strongest hurricane to make landfall in Louisiana since 1856. What about Hurricane Katrina, you may be asking? That was also a powerful storm to make landfall in Louisiana. Was Laura a stronger hurricane than Katrina? Yes, Laura was a stronger storm. Hurricane Katrina had maximum sustained wind speeds of 125 miles per hour at landfall. Here's why. Take a quick look at the two storms side by side. Look at the storm's eyes. Laura's eye is more defined than Katrina's. Also, Laura is a slightly smaller storm, which in this case made it spin faster due to the principle of angular momentum. This principle is easier to imagine if you picture a figure skater spinning faster as they tuck their arms closer to their body. And the last category on the Safford Simpson wind scale is Category 5. A hurricane that is placed into Category 5 status must have a maximum sustained wind speed of 157 miles per hour or higher. In this category, all buildings have a high chance of being destroyed. Expect roof and wall failure, uprooted trees, and fallen power lines. Much like a Category 4, expect most areas in the vicinity of the landfalling location to be uninhabitable for weeks or even months after the storm. Hurricane Michael is an example of the destruction a hurricane of this strength can produce. With a maximum sustained wind speed of 161 miles per hour, Hurricane Michael made landfall in the Florida Panhandle as a Category 5 hurricane. The total estimated damage cost for the storm is said to be around $25 billion. Fun fact about Michael, it was the first Category 5 hurricane to make landfall in the United States since Hurricane Andrew in 1992. This fast-moving storm raced up the East Coast. Salisbury Airport in Salisbury, Maryland saw a little over seven inches of rain in just a four hour period. Good afternoon, ma'am. I'm not officer. sure if you've been keeping up with the news, but Hurricane Delencia has been upgraded to a Category 5 hurricane <gasps> and is scheduled to make landfall in our area within the next few days. This can be a very dangerous situation for both you and your family. Uh -huh. I advise you to evacuate. Yeah, yeah. Mom, Dad, we need to evacuate. I mean, you have, you have a couple of hours. Nope, we're ready now. You're ready, ready now? Yep. Oh, okay, let's go. Yeah. If you were advised to evacuate, would you be prepared? If you are, great. If not, don't worry, I'm going to help you. First of all, it is important to realize that hurricanes can affect us right here on the Delmarva Peninsula, even though we haven't seen a close landfalling hurricane since the Chesapeake Potomac hurricane of 1933. This hurricane was responsible for creating the inlet in Ocean City, Maryland. Part of the reason we don't see landfalling hurricanes here is because we are pretty well protected from hurricanes thanks to the geography of the North Carolina Outer Banks. 
the Outer Banks are responsible for either diverting the storms out to sea or, unfortunately, taking one for the team and intercepting the hurricanes for us. Although we are more commonly affected by storm surge, flooding, and tornadoes, it is always wise to be prepared for the possibility of a landfalling hurricane near us. So, to be prepared for a hurricane, there are some basic things you must have on hand. Have a plan. Having a plan makes a stressful situation seem a little less stressful. Are you going to evacuate or ride it out? Riding out a storm is highly discouraged, especially if an official advises you to evacuate. Next, pack some food and water. Rule of thumb is to pack at least 2,000 calories of non-perishable food items per adult per day and at least one gallon of water per person per day. A three-day supply is recommended if you are evacuating and a two-week supply is recommended if you're staying home. Do not forget to pack any medications that you or a loved one may need during evacuation. Other helpful items include a battery-powered or hand crank radio such as a weather radio, flashlights with extra batteries, a first aid kit, multi-purpose tools like a Swiss Army knife, sanitation and hygiene items, a copy of important documents, cash because credit card machines and ATMs may not be in operation, and extra fuel for your generator and slash or car. It is important to know how to operate your portable generator. Never, never, never run your generator indoors. You and your loved ones could die of carbon monoxide poisoning. During Hurricane Laura, one report says eight out of the 15 deaths related to the hurricane were associated with carbon monoxide poisoning from portable generators. Well, that's all I have for you today. I hope you are now ready to protect you and your loved ones should a hurricane progress your way. I'm the weather woman, Delencia Jenkins. See you next time.